<laughs> Check something out. Because this happened live, like literally live. Oh, we got him live. Let's go. We live, son. Yeah, he can't. Look at that. Corrupt. So, basically what was happening was, um, Slayer wanted me to react to this K-pop documentary that was done two or three years ago on YouTube. And what it is, it's the history of K-pop, <clears throat> where you can learn all about K-pop. And, uh, the interesting part, it was that I've watched K-pop music videos now for a year, Private Reacts for Slayer. And now to learn the history of how the industry emerged and stuff is fascinating, right? But... The funny part about it is, I did this React, and it was fine. Mm -hmm. Guess what just happened? What they happened? just blocked it. Two oh. days later. I put this out Sunday night. It's now, what, Tuesday morning? So it's about a day and a half later. Uh, they just decided they wanted to block it. Who? YouTube? <clears throat> yeah. For what? Which is very interesting, because a judge has ruled that React content is a transformative work that is protected under fair use law, and it's valid content. Therefore, no one has a right to block a React piece of content on YouTube at all. All right? It's probably but your, apparently, it's probably because whoever of you. made the documentary decided they don't want anyone reacting to it and blocked the video that I made. Well, you know. So. That's not your fault. They it's, really have no legal right to do that that's, per U.S. courts. Well, that's Slayer's fault. I can't stop them. What they did is they used YouTube's system to block the video. I'm curious what Slayer's going to want to do moving forward. Well, that's unfortunate. This is what you do. You know, he wants me to do the whole documentary. It's eight parts. I've reacted to two out of eight. I wanted to see the rest of the documentary. Wait. But it very well might be that. He's not sending the videos? It's not It's not going to be something that's going to be viable to do on YouTube. Because YouTube seems like they're going to ha let this company do whatever they want. He's not paying you to upload it to YouTube. No. He's paying you for the video. The truth is it doesn't affect me because. Send him the video. The video was already uploaded. Slayer so already saw it and he, he downloads it himself to do whatever he wants with. Uh oh. So he okay. has that video. Okay. Good. I don't know if he re-uploaded it to his own channel. All right. Good. Good. Or if he's just watching it for himself. As That's long as he, as long as he has the video. He wants. When you have a private video or react. It doesn't matter then, Phil. Patreon. That's how it works. Like it's your property. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever. whatever Why are you, you even telling do. us? Why um, is he telling us this private shit, dude? So it could just be his own video. Just for this him, is what gets you in trouble. Which is fine. He can watch it for himself. But if he wanted to put there's that no on his reason channel, to tell us like this. He can't do it anymore. So if that was the whole intention, then sadly he might have to change his All ideas. Right. What he have a good day, Roach Bay. I think he wanted me to do the whole series over the next several months, and it looks like YouTube ain't gonna allow it. Maybe, maybe there'll yeah. be another place. That exactly, RP. I don't know. You know? See, for me, it looks like I could upload it, and then he'll have a day or two to get it before YouTube blocks it. So I guess he could do it anyway, and then if he wants to re-upload it to a third-party site that won't care about that shit, that actually cares about fair use law... I'm pretty sure that's... There's other video-sharing websites out there. I'm pretty sure you know, Slayer doesn't want you talking about, about like... Shit. They're not going to let some company... What he's got going on, law. like... So you should probably just you know. stop talking See, about this now. I guess... I don't know. I... I guess it's a gray area. I guess it's a gray area. Or is it a gray area? Because the judge ruled that React content was valid. It doesn't matter to you. And was This isn't your problem. Uh, this is Slayer's problem. At the same time, you can't just take like a, a mainstream movie and re-upload it to YouTube and comment over it. So I don't know. I wonder, this I guess there, there problem, has though. to be some legal criteria about what's allowable and what's not. Right? I don't know. What are you going to do? It sucks because I really like that documentary. I don't even know, if, like I said, if Slayer had uploaded it yet, but I really liked it. it. Actually, I was learning a ton about the history of this this music biz and how it ran well, parallel. He, he, can't, up, runs he can't upload it. It's blocked. Dude. What are you, to American what music. Mean? The same trends and things were essentially happening, and it's unique to see that. That in another part of the world, they were essentially doing the same things we were doing over here. But we didn't know about it. In the United States, you didn't hear about any of these other countries. It was like we were the only country on the planet. All you would hear about is our musicians, our groups. You would not hear about anyone outside the U.S. It was a rarity that you would hear that. So, to me, it's kind of wild that it's just all this, this information that you never heard of. And now it's like, wow. Yeah, there's a whole new world out there. That stuff that was happening that I wasn't even aware of. It was fascinating. But, anyway, that sucks. So, Slayer, if you're watching, I'm sorry. Uh, obviously, you know, nothing I can do about that. When YouTube blocks a video, they block a video. I can't control that, right? It's like, sucks. But, you know, what can you do? He won the qualifiers, nope. and I lost the final. Yeah. You know? And what happened? It's just, it's just not so feasible, man. You started begging not, on unless, the internet Unless for you money. have the ability to say, 
I have absolutely no responsibilities in my life. I have absolutely nothing that I need to pay attention to. I can just be hyper-focused on being a competitive Street Fighter player, and I have the funding to do it. Because, not you know, you're not rich. It's whoever's funding you to do this. Then you have a chance. If you're not one of those people, you're never winning. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how hard you try. You're just, the system's going to break you down. Don't listen to you know, Phil. Dude. I was there. I tried. It didn't work for me either. I tried hard. And, he wants to bring everybody you know, down that's to his miserable level. I got kind of burnt level. out and jaded about competitive Street Fighter around 2007. Here He's I am at right. Evo after having practiced all year, traveling to every qualifier, literally winning every qualifier or t placing like top three in every qualifier that I entered. So I'm definitely one of the top Super Turbo players no, in 2007. you're not. All right? And I go to Evo. You're not. And the system breaks me down. I get put into a bracket where I'm playing with people who I'd already been practicing with, so they know my gameplay. It was done on purpose, by the way. It was rigged, which is fucked up, but this is probably the 10th time that happened to me. Those people out there don't like me. They never did. No. They always rigged the system against me. This is what happened. Because I was an outspoken guy. So here I am. I spent the my tournament. entire year, all my money, all my time, invested in a Fighter. And I'm at EVO 2007 just to go out to the same people who I was training with, right? It was literally a redo of B5, which I've told the story of where I went to B5 and it was supposed to be the final Marvel vs. Capcom 1 tournament ever. So I get in this invitational tournament and when I go there, they have me play the guy from Connecticut I flew in with and Arturo Sanchez from New York City who I play with every fucking week when I go to Chinatown Fair. I played no West Coast players. So what did I go for? It was the same situation at EVO 2007. So it's like, why do I care about this? Now you, so you went to the tournament, right? They tested your skills, you know. You didn't perform, so go home. You lose, you know. You lose. That's it. Um, it happens, Phil. Just accept it. Like, you can't win them all. Anymore. And it, it did, it burned me out. And after that, I, you know, did I cover Street Fighter 4? I did, but I became a casualized player. I didn't care about the competitive... Dude, forget about Evo. Yeah, it's been 18 years since Evo. What about, uh, what about the Wolverine figure, right? How long's it been since that? How long's it been since Phil uh, lost the bicycle when he was a kid, right? He couldn't have a bicycle because the bullies would steal it. He talks about that still. FGC, I didn't care about being good because what's the point if the system is going to break you down anyway? You want to talk about it? You want to talk about it? You, unless you're the golden years. boy, or you're, you know what I mean? Like you're the selected Let's talk chosen about 30. one who's going to get all the favoritism, who's going to be able to get their their way paid. Let's talk about 35 years. Pseudo celebrity, and you have the ability to drop everything in your fucking life to play Don Stop. You're never going to win in that shit, <clears throat> you know. So there's just no point. There's just no point in really fucking going crazy over it. Enjoy fighting games for what they are. Don't be a try yeah. hard. Just play and have fun. These people today are crazy. Like I said yesterday on the show. Get ready to listen However, to this for the next 20, 30 years. And there's people who have mastered their character already to the point where if you get make one mistake, they hit you with a 60% dash cancel punish combo. That shit used to be something you would figure out within a year of a fighting game being out. They figured it out in a week. So what are we supposed to do with this game for the next three, four years? I feel like I'm kind of spinning my wheels a little bit because I'll never make advancement. You know, already, it's a week and a half into Street Fighter VI, and you're seeing whenever I play ranked, it's like these guys are fucking crazy, crazy tryhard at this point. Oh, my God. I press one kick and it whiffs because I'm trying to learn spacing for a new character. You whiffed? Oh, it's party time. Standing punch to punish. Dash cancel. Hit, hit. Special move. Dash cancel. Mix up. Hit, hit. Combo. Special move. Super move in the corner. You just lost 70% health because I pressed one button. Like, goddamn. It's, it's, we're, we're a week and a half in, man. It's like, insane. So, you're right. Unless I really start to focus in on, on certain characters. Uh, you know. Holy shit. This is hilarious. An honest fan says, Oh no, those could be casual players playing for fun. You act like everyone better than you is dedicating their life to the game. You honestly think that someone who's casually playing the game for fun has learned how to punish every whiffed move from neutral for a 70% damage combo. You believe that? You are an idiot. <laughs> I mean, wow. That's tremendous stupidity. No. Normal, casual players have not mastered the game in a week and a half like that. You're nuts. You're, you're really dumb. 
Okay, I need to say it, you have to swallow your opinions because this is the world we live in today, right? R regardless of the fact if you agree or disagree with the opinion, just the fact that you gave the political opinion somewhere in a public-facing venue, a public-facing forum. Which I think someone said it was a tweet. It literally doesn't matter, you know? <clears throat> literally doesn't matter. Can't say shit. It's got to say zip, zip it. And that's the space you live in. If you express your political opinion today, there are going to be groups that disagree with it, and you could lose everything. That's the situation we live in today. It's kind of sad, isn't it? But that's where we are, you know? And it's like, well, either you accept it or you become susceptible to it. And it sounds to me like this is a case where he thought he could say what he wanted, what he truly felt, and now he's paid for it, and that sucks ass. But sadly, that's the climate we live in. But, you know, that's... that's uh. Definitely something that we've been talking about. As they say, the pendulum swings both ways. So does the door. The door swings back and forth, right? And there's always extremes. It, just in my lifetime, I've seen extremes one way, then the other way, then the other way, then the other way. It just keeps going back and forth. Actually, I'm doing it backwards because it should be a pendulum swinging this way, right? No, and, that's not a good analogy. You know, maybe things will change in the future. Maybe they won't. Um, Personally, do I think that people should be you know, no. torn apart and canceled every day is why I'm here. Because I don't have the liability of a sponsor dropping me or oh, a collab opportunity being lost. Because I don't have to worry about that. I can just be me every day. I don't give a shit about a bunch of people on TikTok saying nasty shit about me. What did that affect? Nothing. It did nothing to, at all. Who gives a fuck about them, right? Uh oh, so, we're just getting started you know, on TikTok. crazy. <clears throat> we're just getting started. That, that's the life we live, though. And these people who are making a living on online... This is the risk that they have every day. All right. I'll do something like that. And by the way, if I ever did, I will, I will right now. It's 2023. So let's all, let's make, make a note. Like, Today is June 13th, well, he's, he's, 2023. He's never going to be able to go on there and like post content. I will say this right now publicly to everyone. Here every on DSP internet, hashtag is all 400 of you that are watching. Already has all thousands of 10, views. 10,000 that are watching this after the fact on restreams and people commentating on it. That's but us. I will say this. What's up, Phil? If I ever make a political show, okay. everyone's going to hate me. We already do. Literally every person. We already do, dude. Because I'm what not left mean? and I'm not right. All right? A no, lot of we already like hate that. you, like, dude. Oh, you have to be on this Come side on. and this side. You have to be all the way over here or all <laughs> the way over here because if you're not with us, you're against us, right? And in my oh, life, that's dude. never been me. For me, when there's an issue, I know, dude. Or there's something that needs to be important to discuss. You politics, like to ride the middle. I will look at things from all perspectives. You I'll ride try to the understand middle. all perspectives, and a lot of times, I feel the best way to approach these things is from that compromise position. Right, a comp Yeah, that's a compromise. If you truly yeah. want to help people, rather than advance one side or the other, you know what? Phil only wants? help this group. Only help this group. If you truly care about humanity as a whole, if you truly care about money as a whole, you don't want to offend anybody. You know, because in order to get the most amount of money, you ride the middle. That way, I can get money from the left. I can get money from the right. Everybody's giving me money. Because I'm neutral. But it doesn't work that way, Phil. <laughs> Not with politics, at least. Um, people are going to want you to pick a side. And when you don't... Uh, you know, people don't always respond like you think they will. And the, the purposeful advancement of everyone together, then you have to find that medium where we all can benefit in some kind of a compromise position. Most people in 2023 today don't think that way. It's actually become he doesn't want to miss out on any money, dude. Polarizing to the left or right, left or right. He can't stand and the thought of oh, I, I, I pissed politics, this guy off, so now he's not going to tip me. It's essentially going to be me. Oh, I pissed this guy off. Evaluate things. He's from not going to tip me. Both sides to come to that medium position and figure out what really is best. And not to say that I'm going to think that I'm any smarter than anyone else, but a lot of these political things I hear today are just so ludicrous, right? Because what it is is it's, it's about not having moderation and going too extreme. If people would just realize that when people ask a lot me of these things aren't bad, it's what just that I believe people go in, too extreme with them. You know right? what I tell them? These ideologies that you hear about, they're not awful ideologies. It's that I believe take in common sense. 
And that's where we get into that's problems. That's what I believe in. Where people hate each other. And that's ridiculous, right? So, from my perspective, this would not be a, oh, Phil goes, takes the red pill or takes the blue pill or, you know what I mean? Phil's based or Phil's totally Phil's woke or whatever. It's not going to be that at all. Phil's so It's going to be a different dude. kind of show. And I guarantee <laughs> you it's going to end up happening. It's going to be all oh, people Phil hating. Is a, Phil is say, the base, oh, But dude. I'm totally right or I'm totally left. And how <laughs> dare you say something that's not in line completely with my ideology. I hate you. It's like, we well, understand I'm actually on your side. I'm no, trying to help about? everyone. Eh, from no, a neutral perspective. Oh it's very God. hard in life to have a neutral perspective. I'm, I'm friends right now i love that i'm friends uh, Pepsi. And, and and you know even related to some people pretty who are good. very it's conservative pretty good. and i'm actually friends and related to some people who are very liberal and it's very hard to be in the middle and see both takes and say you know i agree with something here and something here and i disagree with something here and something here and just everyone yelling at you no 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 <laughs> you know like oh <clears throat> but anyway yeah that's what i mean like if i ever do politics stuff it's gonna be interesting but i guarantee you it's just gonna get a lot of people just yelling at me saying how bad I am because I don't take a I don't take a side, right? Which exactly. I'm, not, I'm not going to do. Exactly. I'm just not going to do it. And the other, exactly. the other funny part about it, it's not going to be pretty. Feel, I guess that what they call it's not going to be pretty. A centrist. Though. That's what they call it, a centrist, because I'm in the center, right? But they say, oh, you centrist. The only reason you're there is because you think you know better than everyone else. I don't think I know better than anyone else. I don't. I just see these two extremes going at it. It's like Dude, two dogs. If he if he really barking at each transitions other, fully into politics, they're never going to stop. You know, his at it's going to be so toxic. You sit dude. down and realize that the the barking doesn't solve anything. We have we right now we have a body a governing body in the capital of the United States, and whenever they want to get a law passed, they literally sit there like petulant groups of children yelling at each other. Me, no, you, me. What about you, me? You, you read the things they say, the things they say publicly, the things they post here, on their Twitter. Here we go. Stuff. It sounds like a fuck a seven year old. Let's bro. go. It's like this is our government. Let's do These politics, are the in baby. Charge. They can't even sit down and have a civil conversation. They act like a bunch of kids. Right. And they're the people who are running everything. That's who we've elected. These fucking idiots. You know, give me a taste. I wonder why we can't get laws passed to fix problems when they're all a bunch of immature people only looking out for their own self interest. Gee, I wonder Ooh. why our government's like it is, right? Damn, <clears throat> yo, politics so anyway, salt hits different. Um, I kind of like it again. That being said, um, that's why I'm not a, a political guy. You guys don't come to me for politics, right? You don't, you don't say, gee, I wonder what Phil's take is on this. LGBT issue. I wonder what Phil's take is on gun control. I wonder what Phil's take is on healthcare and... Yeah. Yeah, I want to know. <laughs> Tell me, Phil. We're here to have fun with games, correct? We're here to have For fun now. with games. For now. We're not here to fucking be a bunch of idiots and argue with each other about this shit. You come to my streams to get away from all of that because you're bombarded with that everywhere. You can be rest assured that when you come to my streams, this is going to be a place where we're not doing that stuff. Yeah, but what happened to the transition? You can relax and have a good time with me enjoying games at face value. What happened to the tran you said you were going to transition out of games because you're too old. It's hilarious. So okay, this is funny. What is he talking Eshkel about? Eshkel in the chat just says, "What is your take on Bud Light laughing out loud?" All right? Everyone's take on Bud Light is something political. You want to know what my take on Bud Light is? It's shit. It's disgusting. It's like fucking piss in a bottle. I don't even care about anything else. It's a horrible product. So why the fuck do I care about Bud Light to begin with? You might as well fucking piss in a bottle and drink it. It'll taste better than Bud Light. So why the fuck would I care about what their PR campaign is right now? <laughs> right? So if you can't even get past the product is awful, why would I care about any of the political ramifications of the product? <laughs> right? It's, a, it's such a fucking non-issue. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> this is absolutely hilarious. So here we go. What did I say? What did I, what did I literally just say? Thank God we're not doing politics today. I got a dollar tip from someone. They said, fence-sitting centrists don't solve problems. Look what has happened to Tim Pool Spiral. You're just saying you're a coward to be yourself. What? <laughs> I don't even know what you're what talking about. Saying? I don't even know what that means. I am not involved in any of this. Do we understand? I literally said, I'm not involved in any of this. And you immediately confirmed what I said. I said, if I did do politics, this is how people would be. And then you confer you gave me kind of confirmation. <laughs> Thanks for the confirmation, I guess. 
Oh, I got a I got a politics oh channel. Oh my Hold god. Here, here's a politics channel for the TV. Where is it? Anyway. You know, I would I would be curious because I don't know honestly if if political stuff would work for me. Why? Because I can't get I would never get a sponsor. You know? I literally would never once get a sponsor. And the question is, are there enough people out there willing to support content? like that oh here we go through crowdfunding right like in the case of fighting games in here the we case go of video game variety i've been someone who's been doing it for 15 years there's people who love my style I knew we wanted like to i said i make too. curated content for an audience that gets me and likes me i knew we wanted that's to why i get to do this for a living i don't know if trying to open up to a new audience with politics would work because i have to rely on that audience to support it i'm not going to be getting any kind of product sponsorships or partnerships or or anything like that it's never going to happen so it would be very different you know what i mean you need that buy-in from the audience i don't know if i would ever get it <clears throat> he's fishing right now oh let's see here he's uh, fishing Lice for soul did another super chase let's co-op baldur's gate 3 please i don't even know if i'm playing baldur's gate 3 uh i don't know anything about the franchise thank you for the super chat and Ian did another super chat. He says, Bud Light is the Street Fighter cross tech and the beers. Well, there you go. That's a fighting game analogy for it, I guess. Yeah. No, you know what? No, all right. I'll go even further. Ready? This one you might not understand because it's an older reference. Bud Light is the Capcom fighting jam of beers. Now, that's a good one. That's a good reference right there. It's even better. <clears throat> anyway. Hey, you, Phil. Funny to mess around with Phil Burnell, right? Oh, it's real funny to do these horrible things to him because it's just a joke. No, it's not a joke, it's my life. Not Phil Burnell, Shill Burnell. Shill Burnell. The reason we do it is because Phil begs. Wrong. The reason they do it is because they want to see me suffer. That's right. Why does the character say you're you're a pig a roach? You don't look like a pig or a roach. I don't know. I don't know what that means. That's one of their memes. I don't actually know what it means at all. Piggy Smalls took me a dollar. Says, own the pigmy like others. Pigs rise up. Oh my God. Here we go again. Another stupid meme. <laughs> Another stupid meme that means nothing. <laughs>